Golf Bunnies, hello and welcome to another episode of Comment Corner. You may have noticed a change in the day. It's Friday. Uh, now, I've just found it a little bit too much of a rush trying to get everything sorted. Uh, so it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday and then there's going to be a little bit of a blast from the past bowling video on the Saturday. It just gives me uh, enough opportunity to get all my schoolwork done. Because I'm in the midst of teaching Accrington's youngsters. Um, and it also uh, gives me... I don't want to rush these videos. I, I like them to be just right. So um, that's how it's going to be from now on. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Saturday. A uh, bit of bowling for you to watch. And uh, that'll be the week on the channel. So, thanks for joining me, guys. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a Bowls buddy and a member of this wonderful community, please hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free of charge. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for notifications of new content on the channel. So, since I spoke to you on Wednesday, uh, Dan Lofthouse has been to pick his, uh, his set of bowls up. His eight sets of bowls, the jacks, and he was made up with them. And he's been in touch with me uh, already. Uh, and this morning, um, he has had 130 youngsters playing bowls. Okay, maybe not on a bowling green. It was on uh, just some grass by the school. But he's had 130 youngsters playing bowls with his own equipment and the equipment I have given him. Now, I was going to interview him, but the things that he was telling me after this conversation with BCGBA executive Mark Berkhamshaw, um, I don't think I'd want to put on camera, to be perfectly honest. Let's just say he's doing something that he's been told is impossible. And I'll leave it at that for the time being. I might touch on it again next Wednesday. But uh, as far as today goes, I'm just going to look back on the comments and the um, emails and messages that I've had this past week. Um, and maybe just say a little bit about stuff that's happening. So this was on the... Um, if you remember, I put a video of myself in the Bassmasters 1996 making a bit of a comeback. My... Uh, first time in the bass and only time in the bass um, Mark had said Sheffield, Andy, in 2021 in your opinion which tournament has the biggest kudos for winning it? The, Aut the Waterloo Autumn Handicap, the All England or the Champ Champs well in 2021 none of those are happening um, obviously the Waterloo is still sort of in abeyance because of Covid, the Champa Champs has been cancelled and the All England has been replaced by some 32 player competition that is a bit like the All England but it isn't the All England so as far as 2021 goes none of those are happening but for me um, I'm a big Waterloo fan um, and so maybe not We'll have to see how it gets, if it gets back to somewhere like, but I've got to say the Champ of Champs has got to be the big one now. It's the hardest one to win because you're playing people who have won things, won big things. Uh, the All England, the big problem with it is you can win it, but you could have lost in an er in earlier qualifying rounds. Uh, and for me, that's a big, big problem. And the lack of a national championship where everyone can enter and the winner goes unbeaten in that competition I think it's sadly lacking we used to have the crown king which is uh, alas no more that went many years ago but you know the all England I, I think I remember somebody telling me um, the qualification process for their county and you could actually lose I think three times in the various qualifying events and and still win the All England which just seems a nonsense I, I don't think you can do that now but when they used to have you know league qualifiers area qualifiers and they'd, have, they'd use the league merits as a qualifying system so maybe the runner up and the winner 
would go forward to an area final which would and the finalists of that would go forward to a county final that sort of thing i don't think that happens as much now but it's absolutely uh true that you can lose in your merit and still win the all england so uh joel o'shaughnessy andy you're my grandson's bowling hero he's been on the green with me for the first time in four years you must be doing something right keep it up that's fantastic news that makes all this absolutely worthwhile if we've got one person starting bowling again after all these videos i'm made up with that dave parking back in 96 how important was playing on tv did it get you sponsors invites to invitationals and a few pints in the pub afterwards um personally it was one of the few reasons that kept me going at the time as i said i i entered anywhere between 90 and 120 competitions a year and my weekends were spent traveling all over the northwest of england trying to qualify for competitions to get me onto the bass masters um getting on telly yet yeah, it opened doors uh it got you into other invitational comps i mean most 16s back then were sort of you can imagine very difficult to get into and you know being on telly winning a competition just becoming better known did open a few doors uh personally uh, i didn't get any sponsorship uh but it it my my what's the word i'm looking for exposure increased dramatically uh i went from being a nobody really to to somebody who people knew of i'm not saying i'm an, a somebody now but um you know it opened it opened a few doors it got you in competitions and certainly locally people did sort of recognised me in pubs but they never bought me any beer because they're tight in Rosendale um, Martin Maxfield excellent video Andy love listening to all the background to the game and your insight into the game in itself thanks Martin keep the comments up and thank you for watching Jim Courtney really enjoyed the game Andy watched it before but wanted to see it again just sad that it was from an era that we will probably not see again anyway we were lucky that we were around at that time yeah absolutely right i do feel sorry for the people who have taken the game up post television with crown green balls i mean people go on about competitions now and the same people are chasing these small pots and there's nothing after it and it's really sort of one dimensional as a game now as a sport it's there aren't these upper echelons of these great players who we saw on telly who were heroes i mean it just doesn't happen anymore we're all much of a muchness the eighty thousand of us that still play uh moving on to uh paul hargreaves my pal from burnley uh this match reminded me of the 2019 waterloo semi-final between glyn cookson and paul dale as well as you did ac and dale the story for me was of two very experienced bowlers disintegrating before our eyes and missing many good chances to apply the coup de gras um i can't comment on on the paul dale uh glyn cookson game because well i wasn't there uh and i didn't <laughs> wasn't interested in bowls at all at that time i don't think it's a case of disintegrating I, I i'm assuming that that glenn was well up with paul i just think sometimes you switch off you get to 19 or 20 and you're well in front you have six or seven ends of um as a buffer you you know you just relax that little bit too much and you just take the gas off you take your foot off the pedal um, and you just relax you relax i've done the job you switch off and 20 never won a game of course um so i think sometimes you just see the winning line you see it it's there it's within touching distance and you just relax you relax too much um that's the way i see it anyway um and you just start you lose concentration lose that little bit of confidence and as they're coming back suddenly this panic sets in 
you, you might be all but 10 up. At all but 17, you suddenly only got one end buffer before you can both get game. And you get this panic, the anxiety levels rise. And when you get panicky and anxious, you start snatching at balls, maybe delivering them bad or whatever. But it's amazing just what that loss of concentration can do for you. Lack, lack of... Um, just relaxation more than anything you just get out of that game zone but thanks for the comment Paul it's always great to hear from you uh, Bev Johnson picked up on picked up on something that uh, Elton Wellby sorry Wellsby said at the start of that video winning his battle against anorexia well anorexic people look in the mirror and think they look fat funnily enough I look in the mirror and think I look fat so maybe I am anorexic after all uh, Steve Holdcroft, excellent Mr. Cairns, hair didn't suit you by the way, no well I actually do need a trim, I must admit. Uh, high vibration, Ooh, new commenter, the commentary is not too complimentary, overweight, bad tempered and rushes his second ball, who was laughing a year away later at the Waterloo, well done Andy. Well to be perfectly honest, they were pretty valid comments, um, I was overweight, I was an awfully bad tempered young man. And I did used to rush a lot. In fact, one of my friends um, messaged me and said, God, didn't you used to play a lot faster than you do now? And that's a deliberate thing. I've deliberately slowed down over the years uh, just because I did rush too much. I didn't think about my second ball. I played a lot, uh, a lot of ball. All my balls was really uh, get them as close to the jack as I can and let the other guy worry about it. And that's fantastic at a certain level. But when you're trying to get into the upper echelons of the game all of a sudden you've got to think that little bit more it's no good putting a big target up when you're playing tommy johnson you'll end, to, end up two down every end so you just have to think about things a little bit and slow the game down speed the game up do these little bits of, of things to affect the game okay i don't think there's any more on that particular video uh so I'll go to the comment corner from last Thursday. Charles Cooper. Charles Cooper. Andy, what do you think of leagues allowing teams to draw out a player to play twice if they turn up short? Although I think it's a good idea in principle, I don't like the idea you could draw out their best player and lose the advantage of your team turning up with a full team. To combat drawing out, to combat drawing out a player that has, say, just won 21-3 I would suggest the player in the first four with the worst score plays again there's an awful lot in there that absolutely horrifies me the fact that teams are turning up short in the first place if that's happening then there's a, a bigger issue personally if you turn up short I don't think uh, I think you should have to forfeit that game and the other team should gain all the chokes if you want to have a friendly game with somebody so that the player that's turned up gets a game, absolutely no problem with that. In my humble opinion, I don't think that score should should uh, count towards the overall result. In fact, I can imagine a few situations where that could be used to uh, a certain team's advantage. Imagine if you have seven really good players. Why bother getting an eighth? if you can play seven and another one again doesn't seem right to me personally uh, and I wouldn't agree with it in in any situation if it's a case of that having to happen in Covid times that's a slightly different matter but certainly going forward that's not for me that's not a way forward at all uh, I know there's instances of leagues at the minute that are going from ten man teams to eight person teams uh, because they can't get 10 people and then there's other clubs that have got three teams or three and a half teams or whatever well maybe players need to be a bit more players and clubs need to be a bit more collaborative and say right they're short of players we've got lots do you fancy going on loan or something like that I don't know it just seems it just doesn't seem right to me uh, Charles and uh, it's not for me I can't agree with it sorry maybe not the answer you were looking for but uh, it's not for me 
Uh, Steve O'Donnell uh, got in touch. Would it be worth spraying the dimple on the balls blue to match the bias of the jacks? That's what I've done. Absolutely, and I can't, still can't remember who I got it from. You suggest it might have been from your dad's balls as you he t you told me that he sprayed and painted most of them. I don't think it was before then, and it's definitely somebody else. And if I ever find out who it is, I will give them full credit for it. I'm not taking credit for it, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so the balls uh, for the kids, for the balls development equipment, uh, there'll be a little blue disc on the bias side to match the blue on the bias side of the jacks. Um, okay, let's have a look at uh, da, 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 da. Bowls World Blast from the Past from Monday. So Mark had said again, spot on with the council cuts, that was the start of the slide. Sheffield, the council give each green club a set amount of money. Two to three grand, he's not sure. And each club must then arrange for a contractor to service the greens. The contractors charge more money than what the council pay and subs make up the difference. My biggest worry for bowls is with coming out of the pandemic is that all councils in South Yorkshire will have to start subsidising public transport, which is losing money hand over fist, and provide even more public services with shrinking bu budgets. I fully understand these services are essential, so the bowlers will have to pay at least £125 to £150 each just to get the greens cut when the funding goes or is cut. I'd pay it, but I can see a lot that won't. I'm worried that quite a few greens in the next five years will be just left to rot away. And there's not a lot there I disagree with. Unfortunately, we need to get into the real world now. Um, I know a lot of clubs take these payments from the council and they do the maintenance themselves which saves paying out that money and they give free memberships and, and you know people volunteer to do it and that's great if you've got a reasonably big um, membership and there's some fairly young people to it. This equipment isn't light and I know a lot of clubs it's reliant on an old chap who's done it for years people are getting older people can't keep doing it and maybe it's the wake-up call that we all need to start paying realistic membership fees I keep saying to it a, a golf club you're looking at 800 900 a thousand pounds a year and most of those clubs have hundreds of members yes it's a bigger area and they might have a full team of green keepers and they have to buy the equipment and all the rest of it but it's a realistic figure that they need to get through the season, each season. Um, and bowling clubs need to look at it and, and say, look, what are our outgoings? What is it going to cost us to get keep this green maintained to a reasonable standard? And then work it out, what it is on their current membership. And if it's going to cost £5,000 a year and you've got 50 members, that's not so bad it's only a hundred pounds but if it's five thousand pounds a year and you've only got 20 members it's gonna be a bit more 250 quid that's but that's the situation in that's the real world that's where we are and then yeah I'm a bit depressed actually about that now and then I want to talk about Wednesday got a, had a load of comments uh, about it so I'm gonna gonna just mention a bit so uh, would have been nice Martin Gerrard would have been nice for British Crown Green leading from the front and getting all the comps back on the agenda but alas yet again we're given mere crumbs to look forward to to put the onus on the individual counties is a cop out I'm a Cheshire boy and if you win our county merit you absolutely deserve to play in the senior merit now even I could get in by way of a raffle mind you with my luck I'd finish third in a two horse race yep that's absolutely right. Jim Parker, a pie man. Let them have it, Cairns. He complete nonsense decisions again. Not fit for purpose. Hope the honorariums and expenses are reduced too. <coughs> Thanks, James. I'm glad you're watching. It was not my intention to, to have a go at the British Crown Green. I just think it's ridiculous. Sorry. Uh, I got... I, ha I was... Com um, contacted by uh, Lorraine Hurst last night it tells me that the ladies Crown Green Association are having their merit as usual which is 64 on the final day 
so if they can do it why can't we have our all England or British senior merit as we normally do Neil Conn I uh, well reduced prize money can see it being reduced and kept at that level less money paid out less quality balls and that's my concern you start knocking prize money down it ain't going to go up unless we get a sponsor of course but even then I'm not 100% certain but again I still can't understand um, why it's been reduced what what they've, they've not paid anything out last year British Crown Green haven't paid a penny out last year people were furloughed it's been covered by the government there's been no prize money given out people have still clubs have still been paying memberships maybe a reduced number but they've still been paying them so why is the prize money reduced you oh god I'm angry then I need to, I'm going to talk next Wednesday about it more what what Dan was telling me Davin Lofthouse and anyway don't get me started Neil Conn again I'd like to nominate to represent the North East Anton Deck although not sure less prize money will sway them like that uh, Gary Nicholson hi Andy it's absurd absurd to think nominations for the All England could to be drawn from a hat I could nominate myself and get drawn out ahead of players and I can't even win my club comp what you've got to remember is it's not the All England it's not the British senior merit it is an alternate version it is a watered down 32 event and yes it could be I'm not saying this is going to happen but it's entirely possible that the counties could decide actually we're not really bothered about the players playing let's nominate our president and our secretary they could do there's nothing to stop them it's up to each county to decide how they send two representatives to that competition let that sink in no bowling involved it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be on merit they just have to pick two people there's no guidance from the national governing body to tell them how to do that so whoever whichever county they could decide well actually I've done a lot of work this last year and I've not been paid and I've not had my honorarium I'm going I'm I'm putting myself forward a county secretary could say I'm not saying they will but that could happen that's where we are at now that's where we're at we're through the looking glass people uh, and I'm going to give the last word, well, before, before I mention this one, I just want to say Alan Ward has also been in touch with me. And he sent me an email just saying, agreeing with what I was saying about the Bass Mass, how it used to spur everybody on, all the, the bowlers, all the competition bowlers, that's what their driving force was. Uh, and Alan was one of those guys, went round the circuit, travelled from Blackpool to all these different events, and it kept you going. And we don't have that now. We have nothing like that. And that's why competitions are where they are. Because there's nothing to drive you forward. The last word on today's uh, comment corner is from Paul Harper. If you remember, he, he messaged in either last week or the week before. Disagreeing with what I said about junior bowling, which is absolutely fine. I'm, I, as long as we get some debate going, I'm fine with that. Andy, I commented about the juniors a couple of weeks back and I'm doing it again now. How frustrating is it that the Junior County Championship has been cancelled when the senior event is going ahead? A reduced version, like the senior event, would be accepted, I feel, with the circumstances. But to just cancel it beggars belief. My partner's team has a number of older players, 16, 17, 18, and they may not play again after two cancelled seasons. Lost to the game forever at a time we should be doing everything to bring new, fresh blood to the game. Glad they'll have the merit to play for at least, but so very disappointing about the county championship. And that, for me, is a fantastic comment. Absolutely. It's so short-sighted. It's so short-sighted. Even if you had a reduced version, like the seniors are doing, or a one-day version at two greens, or something, just to keep the juniors interested and have something to play for. I feel so sorry for them, and I feel so sorry for all the bowlers that play at representative level who won't be doing, 
or enter the competitions and can't or attend the final days or attend all the matches and now can't because they're not happening for me this was the easy way out not running events was the easy way out putting things in place so the events could run safely could run properly could run within the covid regulations was the difficult part and i don't want to, i really don't want to knock the people who are running our sport but i can't help it i cannot help it we need to get back to normality as quickly and as safely as we can and in my honest opinion not playing the events that British Crown Green have cancelled is a massive massive mistake and there will be people juniors especially if they have nothing to play for they'll pack in they'll find something else to do and that at a time when the game is let's face it it's dying 80,000 people we've lost over 500 clubs in the last is it six years we had two and a half thousand we've now got 1800 so that's actually more isn't it what are we doing the very first thing it says in the front of the British Crown Green handbook is British Crown Green Bone Association it's their duty it's their aim it's their objective to promote the game of crown green bowls I don't think they're doing that anymore I really don't I've probably said I've probably said too much I've probably really said too much about British crown green and I really need to stop but I get so frustrated with it people being told that it's impossible to do what they're doing going into schools it's, it's virtually impossible to get into schools yet we have people that do it on a regular basis and they don't get funded they don't get help yes children aren't the be all and end all of the future of our game we have to look at other avenues as well but if children don't know about our sport how can they ever play it how can people play our sport when they don't know it exists the big bowls weekends coming up end of may i've had a few emails about it because i signed up we can't even run a run the merits we can't even run the british senior merit we can't run the county championship properly yet we're having these supposed open weekends is it just bowls england that are promoting this i know british crown green are part of it but who's driving it who's who's behind it who's driving it who's gonna make this succeed it's not british crown green it's the clubs it's the clubs and the volunteers at every club they're the ones who are going to make it succeed so it's down to us again down to us to do things with little or no help and that's the sad state of affairs I'm not going to say any more because I will get into trouble if I do and I don't want to get banned just yet but anyway I've said enough and I'm going to leave it there enjoy Friday enjoy the rest of your day hope you'll tune in tomorrow for um, a blast from the past game and a little bit of an intro from me uh, enjoy your weekend the weather looks nice get out on the bowling greens get bowling get playing get enjoying yourself and hopefully I'll see you on Monday for a, uh, a trawl through the Bowlers World Archive. So I'll see you then. Have a good weekend. Bye for now.